New York City faces the serious challenges of any major city, specifically when it comes to inequality and climate risk. But with Democratic majorities at both the city and state level in government, Addressing those challenges is more possible now than it's been in decades. And some real experts are at the table, notably J. Philip Thompson, the city's deputy mayor for strategic policy initiatives, who comes to the job with years of experience as a scholar and coalition builder and urban planner. For all of us wanting economic democracy, honest dialogue and deep unity across race and geography we need to have a rough level of equality and resources and capacity. What attracted you to working in New York? What's distinctive about New York City and its capacity to advance economic democracy? Well, New York has always been a leader in uh, innovation, but also in people's movements. The reason we had uh, created uh, the City University of New York, which until the 1970s was free, was because of immigrant movements fought for that in the 1930s and won it. The reason we have the largest public hospital system in the country is because people fought for that and instituted it. The reason why uh, we have public housing was originated in New York, in the Lower East Side, uh, because people fought against slum housing and these programs created the great middle class that America takes great pride in, but it actually came from these kinds of initiatives and these kinds of struggles. What do you lift up as the economic democracy initiatives that you're most proud of here in the city so far? Well, we are struggling with this, but one of the things that we're working on is actually using the institutions that I mentioned as anchor institutions, the hospitals alone in New York spend $12 billion a, a year buying goods and services. Uh, why can't we use some of that $12 billion spend to build firms that are democratically run and controlled, that have the welfare of the community and their workforce as a priority? Companies that actually have a civic core to them, why can't we build those kinds of companies? Because Around the world, there are plenty of examples. The idea that the private economy will take care of everyone's prosperity and all you have to do is leave it alone is a myth. Mm. And what we're really saying is local government has to step up and we actually have to plan and ensure that our dollars, our public dollars, are being used in the best possible way for the residents of this city. And that means building companies that are responsive to the people of this city. So when I'm asked, why do we need economic democracy, my short answer is that we needed to hold on to democracy. We have a silver tsunami coming in New York, where one in five New Yorkers will be elderly in need of home care. Home care workers right now are paid minimum wage. They're poorly trained. They don't know how to keep people out of hospitals because they're not trained to do that. So one of the initiatives we have as a city right now is a working group on long-term care. And we are really trying to model how do we bring together home care providers, unions, community groups together to say how do we create a long-term care system that works better for workers, better for patients, it saves government money by keeping people out of emergency rooms, and can be transformative. And, and for us, that is modeling economic democracy. You have a major investment about to be made in the name of the city around the Green New Deal. How will you, how are you in the administration working to ensure that the benefits of that investment are equitably distributed? Almost a quarter of the city's energy is going to close in about three years. Um, we have to reduce consumption as well as expand new ways of, of generating energy, uh, renewable energy. And so that means uh, we're going to have to have a retrofitting program for buildings to reduce energy consumption. We have 900,000 buildings in New York that need to be retrofitted ultimately. So we're talking about jobs for a generation. So one of the things we're working on are ensuring that our most at-risk young people, people who live in public housing, people in low-income communities, actually get the training that they need so they can be the next generation of green architects, green carpenters, green engineers, green laborers, HVAC workers, et cetera. That's one. The other thing is uh, we can have microgrids that produce energy on a local basis that are community owned. I reject the idea that labor, quote unquote, sees the workplace as the primary place because labor doesn't only consist of unions. I would say that one version of labor thinks that workplaces or where all the action is. 
But I would argue that folks who've been fighting in civil rights, folks who've been fighting in the women's movement, they're also dealing with labor issues. And part of the problem in America has been the narrow frame that labor unions have taken, which have actually weakened it. So I think in order to really build a strong labor movement, the labor movement has to encompass women. It has to encompass people of color. It has to change its identity and its narrative. So what does that look like here in New York City, especially as you advance this economic democracy agenda? Well, in New York City, I think it means getting labor unions and community groups together to come up with common plans for things like how we do business as a city, what kind of companies get contracts, how do we address the affordable housing crisis, can labor bring in some of their pension funds? Is there a participatory process so that members of unions and members of communities can work with the city and others to say, here's how we want to see those dollars utilized because it's the people's money.